All right, everyone. Sorry that we are late, but this is the Gilcast simulcast on the Sports Grid Fantasy Football Podcast and the Roto Grinders Podcast Network. I am Davis Maddock. I am joined by, of course, Sammy Reed and Nate Noling. Two of the three of us are just hating our Mondays. We are not enjoying ourselves in the slightest. And one of us played a running back who was a dog to see two targets and, and just printed money anyways. Sammy, take your laps, bro. Take your laps. I don't know, man. It's just, it's more of an art, you know, you just got to know. It's really, it really is more of an art. It is. Yeah. You just, yeah. You just got to know that it's, <laughs> it's November and Derrick Henry's facing the Jaguars and he's 6.9. So that's real nice. And he's just going to smash. That was easy. It was way better than, than what you cucks put in. You know, I, playing, I will, uh, I will say this, Nate. I scored about 30 less points than you, I think, maybe 20, and my lineup is just objectively better than yours. Your, line, <laughs> your lineup. <laughs> Nate's lineup is an abomination. <laughs> no. What, was, what did I score? 117? What was the catch? You played, you played in Keel Harry and Jordan Matthews. Yeah, because I got Michael Thomas. <laughs> I went Michael Thomas and Julio. <laughs> I don't even want to do this show. I'm looking at your <laughs> Guys, I don't even want to do this show. You think well, I want to do this show? I didn't – Nate, you think I want to do this show? I didn't break you 100 didn't points. 100. I didn't – you think – word from you. Well, so here's the thing. Obviously, if I play Jameis, my lineup smokes yours. Like, it's just – let's that, that's not up for debate. Uh, so let's, let's go – let's talk about quarterback. Why are you guys better than me, and why did you play Jameis instead of Matt Ryan? Davis, I tell you this every week. He is extremely high floor and extremely high ceiling every time. You saw Matt floor. I mean, he's going to get 300 yards passing. He will get 300 yards passing, and he does throw passing touchdowns. I don't care how many interceptions he's going to throw. He is, week to week, one of the higher floor guys out there. This was a no-brainer. Why would you pay more for Matt Ryan? He was projected for more points. Bad play. Not a bad play. He was the he was the most known quarterback in all the high stakes games. There's no way he was a bad play. Jameis was just a what, better play. If like I, I don't understand how people weren't playing Jameis before this week, and then this week he was like the lock of locks. Yeah, we locked him in really early in the week, like during the guild cast last. We week, locked him really. in last yes. week. Yeah. Yes. So what? Like then you went to Matt Ryan and what Julio? I mean, why do we play Julio? Why do we think the Falcons are? Yeah, that's a really good question. Why did we play Julio Jones? Why did we play Julio, and why did you play Matt Ryan? It's one thing to play Julio. It's another to play Julio and Ryan. They had the highest team total of the week by, like, four points. Like, no one else was even close to them. Pretty sure that's not true. I mean, they did have the highest team total, but. So, they had a – I will tell you guys right now. Okay, no. The the Browns were close. (laughs) Yeah, this is a (laughs) made-up Davis Maddox stat. (laughs) That was made up. It. That was it was More it was points. just that it was just the highest total. It was the only game over fifty of the week. Was that game? I mean, he's, um, the reason is is because he popped the optimals, and people were like, "Well, shoot, I got to play Matt Ryan." Like, I think he was popping in DR stuff, and he was popping in the blitz, and you know, people. Yeah, were like, he was That's the great. he like, was the reality. top projected quarterback. Yeah, but but it's wild. He was 45% owned, Ryan was, and Jameis was 9% owned. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean 5 to 1 because just... people legit think Jameis is bad because he throws interceptions. Well, he just plays in the most optimal way. Yes, he throws the ball downfield. Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan is really like the kiss of death for cash lineups though. It just it just never works out. Like that dude, that dude has chalk, you just can't do it. I mean, he basically like uh, Matt Schaub came in for the last possession and outscored him on the day with the touchdown pass to, to Calvin Ridley. Which is not the first time that it's happened? happened this year. Like yeah. that, that Matt Schaub has been the only ago. good Atlanta quarterback this year to play. Because <laughs> he was always he was 4K. You get you paid seven point whatever or whatever he was for Matt Schaub. That's what you did. I mean, I, well, I feel like Julio would have smashed if we had Matt Schaub in there. Oh, who, oh yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Julio, he left the game with a shoulder injury, and he actually came back in. Like, he tried. He tried to, like, gut it out for his bros, 
And uh, it just, it, of course, it didn't happen. But yeah, he, be- he became the first wide receiver not to smash against Tampa Bay all season. Really I don't impressive. feel, I don't know, like whatever. It just, it, he, obviously, he ran horrible in this game. He got 271 passing yards and only played three quarters. And then, you know, if he gets, if he gets that touchdown to Calvin Ridley, he gets the 300-yard bonus, he gets a touchdown, and like, you know, whatever. Then he only loses to Jameis by 15, I guess, but it, or 12, and said Please, he lost then by Then Jameis would have thrown more. Jameis only threw the ball 28 times. If, if, I, thought, if I thought it was scores, all – dude, I thought it was all about volume, bro. Matt, Matt Ryan threw 46 passing attempts. Volume is king. Jame, Jameis volume is still, king, Nate. Oh, Matt Ryan was <laughs> – Jameis still led Matt Ryan in expected points this week because of where he throws the freaking ball. Well, I mean, I don't know. I just, like, Matt Ryan was projected for more points. Obviously, he uh, did not get as many points because he's horrible, but I don't – that 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 part of my lineup was, sure, it's regrettable, but I'm not going to, um, like, stay up at night thinking about that being a bad decision because it wasn't. It was just one of those things where you flip a coin and sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. Uh, I will say though, there there are mistakes in my lineup to be found, and uh, they are they are mostly found at the running back position because, uh, Sammy, I just I did not get the the memo that Derrick Henry was going to be forty percent owned. I I actually didn't get it either. I was shocked and appalled that he was that high owned. I thought I was like this like low key genius, just like dude, late game hammer. I'm just going to smash people. I mean, the truth is we had all these running backs in the 5K range, Philip Lindsay and James White, Miles Sanders and Brian Hill, and they're all just horses' asses. And at the end of the day, I, I just felt so sick about playing any of them that I said, you know what, I'm going to be sharp and just not get any of these guys in my lineup. I'm going to play running backs that actually get the ball and are good, and uh, that's what I did. That's why I won. I didn't think Henry was a bad play. I just couldn't believe he was as owned as he was. I didn't think he was a bad play. I thought about playing Henry earlier in the week. And, I mean, he was the second – I had him behind Kamara, I think, as, like, one of the second best upper-tier running backs. It was, like, him – it was Kamara, him, or Fournette were, like, the – but I didn't think he was going to be 45% owned. Oh, my goodness. There was yeah, a lot either, more either. Derrick Henry in optimals than uh, than I realized on on Daily Roto stuff. Like way more now that I'm I'm like looking at it and running it with no restrictions. He was in a lot more of these lineups than I initially I think anticipated. I texted you guys on Friday and was like, I think Derrick Henry is in play, and I hate myself. And he was, yeah, but I just didn't play him. He wasn't a bad play. Semi sharp move. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He, yeah, let's let's be honest. He ran hot to get where he did. I mean, he had one catch. Well, he scored. He this scored is, two touchdowns in a span of of twenty seconds. The first time someone has done that since Ladanian Tomlinson. That was hot. That was real hot. And he had a screen pass touchdown called back because of a hold on it. So, I mean, he he would he, they they had I think multiple shots from the one, and and they like did play actions and stuff. Like he had a four touchdown game just sitting there easily could have happened but the the truth is he's not the kind of running back I generally like to play in cash and normally I wouldn't consider him but it was just that kind of slate where the, it was the there were so many were, bad players to be considering yeah there there really were and you guys considered some some really bad players and then you put them in your lineups which I mean let's let's hear the mea culpa because you guys played a running back that ended up with negative yards. Well really, really Nate played five wide receivers if you think about the fact that James White <laughs> James White was never ever 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 gonna get rushing work in this game. So so of course we all played Kamara. Kamara was like an, a non debatable oh, part. He he was the he was the highest owned guy in cash games. Everyone was gonna play him. Uh, and then in my mind, the running back pool after that was Brian Hill, Miles Sanders, and uh, and and James White, and I guess theoretically, uh, projection systems did like Kalen Balaj a little bit, but they don't know that he's never topping two yards per carry. So I was not considering Kalen Balaj. Um, I think Kalen Balaj outscored James White, though. He probably did. I James think White did. everybody he outscored James points. White. Hey, hey, Patrick Laird, Patrick Laird outscored James White. My my Patrick Laird lineup would have actually been better because it would have had Zach Ertz. Ooh. Oh my gosh! I'm, I would have loved to see you cash Patrick Laird in your lineup. Can we talk about that for a minute? That people are like up in arms this morning about Patrick Laird because I, because I do love was it. like doing a meme about it. 
I mean, you yeah. really love to see it. Like, people are upset. People are yeah. upset, Nate. People are big, upset because no one, mad. Yeah. Yeah. no one likes Patrick to have. He was one percent owned in the Millie Maker. People yeah, are people, people are mad at Overzet, like not not getting that he's like Borat. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they're the people who are getting trolled by Borat and like no, doing just people don't interviews. like to have people don't like to have fun on the internet, man. People just they always consider, want to take themselves so seriously. I didn't consider Brian Hill at all. I didn't think he was in play. I thought Lindsey was in play. <laughs> I thought White obviously was in play. I thought Sanders was in play. I don't think I considered Lindsey or uh, Hill at all. So here's so the here's, thing. Here's, J- James White was not in play, as we found out. I right, still so, don't even – like, talk to me about this James White thing. How did he end up with a season low in everything? Because they just they just they just it was wet and it was gross and they were in the lead the entire time so they just gave Sony the ball. Yeah. I think what I'm realizing is there's a leak in my game that I will never ever consider like rain unless it's like a monsoon. Like I, I'm not gonna oh it's a wet game I'm not gonna play James White if he projects well I'm gonna play him and if that's a leak in my game I'm gonna lose. Like, well well you also have a leak when it comes to snow Nate. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, but, but here's the thing, like when it's snowing, you're like, oh, they're not going to pass the ball very much. Like it's going to decrease that. I mean, when there's a lot of rain and wind, it, you had to consider the possibility that Belichick was just going to go really run heavy. And I, I feel like, and tell me if I'm wrong, you guys thought that because their receivers were out and the, that the weather was bad, they do a lot of really short passes and that would help James White. I, I, I don't know. Nate, Nate would assume that would be mentally weak thinking, but I will, yes. I will confirm, I will confirm right now that that was definitely a thought that I had that like, I also thought this game was going to be a lot more competitive. I, I, I did not think that Dallas was going to go without scoring an offensive touchdown. I, I thought that new England was going to be forced to actually try and move the ball a little bit. And, and if they had been, had they been forced to try on offense, I think that James White would, would have gotten more than 0.9 DraftKings points. That's just my professional opinion. Yeah, your professional opinion is that Jason Garrett was going to go into Foxborough and like actually compete with Bill Belichick. <laughs> no, my my professional opinion was that Dak Prescott, who leads the NFL in YPA and EPA, was uh, I, I mean, I actually don't think Dak played that poorly. But wow, the, the efficiency team... metrics have volatility. Shocker, shocker. I'm you think YP? That. You think YPA is like a? I mean, it's like the number one explanatory variable for football games. Uh, week to week, it has volatility, and so if you're building your projections around efficiency metrics like that, you will. Well, Dak was projected for like 14 DraftKings points and didn't get there. It was. It was not really so much about that. But Nate, it's really more of an art. It's okay, really so more of an art to think about. Thing. <laughs> I, it wasn't the weather. I, 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 like, I'm never going to play somebody because of the weather like that. I played James White because he projected well, because I projected him to have similar target share to what he's had the past couple weeks. And I, he literally just got a season low in workload. I mean, he literally got a season low in workload. And I, I mean, Rex Burkhead had five targets and he had two, like, I mean, that is, uh, Rex Burkhead is better than him. So, like, that is that is something to probably consider is that Rex Burkhead is, like, a more versatile and more useful NFL player than James White. I mean, you guys legit paid, what, 5.3 for a running back <laughs> who never is going to get, like, more than two carries and never is going to get goal line work, and you're just praying. That's not true. That's not true. He does, he does get he goal does line get work goal sometimes. Work. Sometimes. James, yeah, when they're, James like, White in a hurry has up. Averaged, James White has averaged, like, 13 to 14 DraftKings points expected every single in the, week. In the sense that he literally gets in between 12 and 14 DraftKings points every week, and that's it? Okay, right. but, from a, but from a floor standpoint of, like, I did not think his floor was this low. I mean, he literally saw seven targets the week before, three the week before, five, eight, nine, nine, ten, four, seven, and then he saw three. Like, when they were low on wide receivers, I just didn't expect this. And I, and I got it. I got a point nine from James White. What was the cash line? Would I have cashed with any other running back? 126, right around okay, there. So I would, have, I would have cashed with literally any other running back. That is mm, not, not Brian Hill. Okay, well, chances of me playing Brian Hill are slim to none. I would have played I, – I think the next running back I would have played would have been Sanders. I just got off Sanders because of the Agenius. No, I probably would have played Lindsey. 
Sanders played a lot, and Sanders pro- Sanders should have like had thirty. I think that's like a conservative estimate based on how many um just stone cold oh, like dude. Okay, if you get, if you guys don't watch the games, you probably wouldn't be that tilted by Sanders' performance. You'd be like, oh, you know, he was targeted a couple times. He he grinded to eleven and a half. But let me tell you this: Carson Wentz just it was like he was sad, like purposely trying to sabotage the team it was it was unbelievable how bad he played like sanders wide open for two multiple like two separate instances where he would have Bro, scored that and Wentz just missed where him he, where he missed him in the flat was egregious that was the most wild crap i've ever seen in my life like he missed him by like 10 yards and there was yeah. nobody there it was just a walk-in touchdown he was 5 yards away it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And when he missed that, I was just laughing to myself. I'm like, I am making money today. This is happening. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're fading that play in like the first drive of the, the first uh, drive of the game, you see, you see this other guy is just like, Oh, well, okay. He's not going to score. He's not going to do anything today. Yeah. You just know you're, you're walking into the money. So I wanted to see, I wish, I wish Nate had played Sanders so that we could have seen him play three Eagles in cash. So I looked at I looked at uh, a three Eagles and cash team, and I decided, uh, yeah, you you can't do that. Like it was going to be Vance McDonald and J Matt or um, Dallas Goddard and and Keel Harry because I just you know I didn't want didn't want three Eagles and cash. That proved to be a, a correct decision, but yeah. uh, we should we should probably move to to wide receiver now. Or I Nate's feel like answer- we should spend we should spend the rest of the podcast talking about <laughs> you guys James playing White. James White. That was an all time <laughs> tilapia play. It was just like so, he is so bad. Like American dollars spent on James White. <laughs> if you Nate, Sammy, if you remember, this is the second time this year I've fallen for this trap. <laughs> where i was Wait, just like oh yeah james white it's fine i mean it's just... i believe i played david montgomery and james white in the same lineup earlier this year that was smooth very smooth so very smooth nate what do you have to say for yourself nate I, if you try and defend this i'm gonna legit get mad nothing i played james white no, 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 I don't, James White, whatever. You need to talk about how your thought process led to you rostering in Keel Harry and Jordan Matthews both. Okay, and Keel Harry was like a lock. I, at, at his he price tag. He, he, got, he got three targets, so he was a lock. Okay. I, th- um, I think it was four, honestly. Okay, I wasn't going to not play and Keel Harry. Um, and I think that was not a question. Julio was the play and then getting up to Michael Thomas to me was like when I found out I could do that I was like great I'm doing that J Matt I don't think was a bad play he had six targets last week uh there was no literally no people available for Philadelphia he was 3.5 in a game that they should have passed a lot and he ran I can't remember how many routes he ran last week but they were all at like a 13 a dot I mean that was a no-brainer play at 3.5 I felt better about J Matt than I did about N. Kill Harry I think are you just – what are – I don't even understand what you're upset about. The running back position this week was brutal. Fading a third running back was the sharp move. Everybody else got single digits points from one of their guys, either Brian Hill, Philip Lindsay, uh, Miles Sanders. Fading that, run, that tier running back well, was the sharp well, move. Well, you know what people did is they just played Derrick Henry as their third running back. <laughs> 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 but Nate's answer was, I'm putting in J-Matt, and I'm not taking the L on it. I'm just jamming him in, and I'm not sorry. <laughs> Jordan Matthews was on his casting Fritos like two and a half weeks ago. <laughs> and he's attached to Carson Wentz, who can't throw the ball accurately five yards down the field. <laughs> what's the the thing is the thing is is like in isolation i don't actually think j matt is that bad but piling j matt and in keel harry on top of each other to get in michael thomas just was it was it i just i i do i don't have i don't have the explanatory words to to tell like just that Nate, that perplexed. was so it was so galaxy brain like this was this was the this was the 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 playing uh four cheap guys to get in Darren Waller uh week 12 version except you did it with Michael Thomas 
which is fine because Thomas is actually good. But I mean, this is just peak <laughs> Nemo Noling at its best. It's it's Four because receivers. it's because he hates Odell Beckham for some reason. He he just like is just like Odell Beckham is like a pox on lineups to Nate, and I don't get it. Yeah, I, I, Nate, I why you don't I, like Odell, bro? I mean, I wasn't gonna play Odell over Julian Edelman. So why didn't you play Edelman? Because I wanted Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas has the highest freaking floor any week. I just don't. I don't. I don't think you. If can anything, be I shouldn't have played Julio. If anything, I shouldn't have played Julio. Julio no, was. This is mistake. like you can't. Do not be. Now. Do not be a results-based fish. I'm not. If anything, I shouldn't have played Julio. Michael Thomas was the highest projected wide receiver for me, highest projected value wide receiver, and he had the best range of outcomes. He has Dude, every every form. projection system, every so Daily Roto, the Blitz, four for four, RG, everybody. Not only not only had Julio Jones as a better value, had Julio Jones projected for more raw points than Michael Thomas this week. Okay. Well, those projection systems, I, I don't know what else to say. Michael Thomas has the highest floor of any wide receiver every single week, and it's not even close. How high it's is like, um, Jordan Matthews and Keel Harry's floors combined? Like a floor of like 5.4 DraftKings points? Michael Thomas has an above 30% target share with an 8 out of 8, and he literally is like one of the most efficient wide receivers of all oh, time. Nate, Nate, it's – Nate, it's, it, it's – everybody it's, knows I mean, Michael sure, Thomas. No one, no one is telling you Michael Thomas sucks. Everyone is telling you that doubling down on 3K wide receivers is, is just mega mind, like just stone-cold mega mind. I mean, I don't think – there was that was where the value was. I don't feel bad about that. I feel bad I mean, about who we. Is. We had Odell Beckham project. This is actually crazy. We had Odell Beckham projected for 20.4 DraftKings points, and he got 24, 20.4 DraftKings points. Oh, wow. Very sharp. It's just, I don't, I, I, there was like not a second, and I like, whatever, like I suck clearly. I play James White, but like, I just don't get how Odell Beckham wasn't like the second guy you click in your lineup after Julio. Well, you got to explain it to all- me. I think we all miss the uh, Jarvis Landry revenge game narrative. That really it's the big, big us, revenge but... game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Julio is not who we should be paying up. This he literally has a less than twenty percent target share. What are we doing? Eight K for Julio. Well, I I think that Hooper being out and a lot of these projection systems was like like missing like Hooper's twenty percent target share shifted a ton over to Julio and yeah, and well, Freeman and Freeman it... to be honest. It shifted a bunch to Russell Gage, who yeah, Ru- Russell smashed. Gage is just uh, the stone cold uh, killer there now. Honestly, yeah. Davis, I don't feel bad about the Michael Thomas thing at all. I feel bad about Julio. I should have paid down for like um, Julian Edelman instead of Julio. I could have saved eleven hundred dollars and paid up instead of um, I could have gotten to Fournette instead of White. That I was cannot believe I can. I really this I is don't really tilting me. Three K wide receivers who are guaranteed to get five to ten targets is the one. They were and Keel Harry and Keel Harry got four targets and had one catch. They were uh, Matthews was literally not going to see less than five targets. Where were those? Literally, I am Jordan Matthews' biggest supporter in history. I like I am close personal friends with Jordan Matthews, and I'm telling you, this is was bad. It was just how many bad. snaps did he play? Did he play every snap? Oh, he played all of them. Okay, so how can you tell me that a 3.5k wide would you have played Andre play- Patton for 3k? He plays every snap for the Chargers and gets four targets a game. No, I wouldn't have done that because there's well, no I'm, Nate, it's the same, it's the go. same shit. No, there is not. Alshon, Jordan yeah. Matthews, Jordan Matthews is just fancy Andre Patton. No, Jack, Desan, Jack, Alshon Jeffrey. <laughs> And no, there were no wide receivers. Aguilar, there was literally nobody. They just they, all they did was they 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 just played Goddard and Ertz and targeted them every snap. And Matthews Greg Matthews Ward. Matthews was fifth on the team in targets, Nate. Matthews had a. Uh, you're missing something there, dude. Uh, Am I? I don't, I? Think, you're I don't think anything. I don't think <laughs> I'm missing anything. Yeah, he's missing that Jordan Matthews sucks and the Eagles suck and Carson Wentz sucks. And, uh, like, he was probably, like, 0.3% owned because nobody in their right mind thought Jordan Matthews was a good oh, player. Oh, yeah. no, well, I, I lied. I lied. In the, Ma- Matthews got one on more target than Sanders. He was second on the team in Whopper. He had the team in air yards. He had uh, – yes, I, I will Nate. play 97 air yards for 3.5K. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, 
Nate's gonna be Nate's gonna be serving Thanksgiving dinner with like empty plates and being like, "Here's your Whopper, family." <laughs> <laughs> Nate, your family can't eat Jordan Matthew. Well, more importantly, your family can't eat Carson Wentz air yards. One Carson Wentz air yard has to be worth like point two six, like a normal quarterback's air yard, because he's so egregious. <laughs> I don't think you realize, like, getting – How bad Carson three, Wentz is? Getting 100 air yards at 3.5K is a profitable proposition. We how, many, how many air yards did Keel Harry get? Probably like 30. <laughs> so you I got mean, 120 50. air yards for, for, six, for 7K in salary? But, Nate, Nate, this is what you always do. You justify every play in, like, a vacuum, and you don't, like, look at you, holistically. It's an art, dude. Yeah. It's a, you're, it's you're, bu- art, you're, like, building, you're building a lineup where Michael Thomas basically has got to get 35 or 40 to salvage no. you if, if Jordan Matthews or Nkeel Harry or both of them have their floor games. And by the way, the cheaper the guy is, the less targets he's going to see, the lower the floor is, and the higher the probability that they hit that floor. Julio was the mistake. Julio was the mistake. Paying 8K for well, a guy. Well, your, your mistake, your mistake was, was not playing mistake. Odell Beckham. That was the mistake you made. Odell, Julian Edelman, anybody other than Julio. And I would have gotten up to – yeah, that was the mistake. So I wish, I wish that we could make fun of Sammy here. But Devontae yeah, Parker is just – uh, Sa- Devontae Parker is just a baller, dude. Sammy had a good lineup. Uh, it's, it's about time. I mean, it, so, I was, so I was pretty over that 5K running back tier, but I was also over – that receiving tier, you know, that I, Edelman and Beckham were like fine plays. Like, so I'm not going to sit here and say they weren't, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought that the salary at wide receiver two was better spent to get good running backs than it was to like just jam in in Odell Beckham or an Edelman or whatever. So I paid down there and, and yeah, I paid, I played a uh, Devonte Parker and he was pretty good. He got, you know, whatever, 10, 11 targets. And he's been getting that kind of volume ever since Preston Williams uh, got dusted out. Like, I think he's got like a 43% uh, air yard share, which is like top five in the NFL since Preston Williams went out. And he's really kind of become a number one receiver. And in a game where they rated to trail, uh, which is every game for Miami, I just thought he'd see a a decent amount of targets. And I thought that was, that was just fine for the extra money that I could spend to, to like play Le'Veon Bell we didn't even talk about that. Like, my running backs were Kamara, Le'Veon Bell, and Derrick Henry. So I didn't mess around with any of the scrubs, and, and that ended up being good. And it's something that, like, Adam Levitan talked about um, on one of his pods that I think helped me out. He's like, look, like, these, these – Nate, you're saying, like, receiving efficiency is so volatile week to week. And it's like, okay, if I, if I have a guy who I think is going to see kind of similar receiving numbers that's a lot cheaper – um, even though he's going to be less efficient, like Devontae Parker compared to Odell Beckham, you know, I'm just going to pay down and, and use that money for more assured stuff like better running backs. Yeah, Devontae was a great play. I mean, he, yeah, he projected to have insane opportunity for his, do- for his salary. It was – that's not a bad play at all. I, I think Sammy didn't have any mistakes other than I think the – I was on Le'Veon earlier in the week and got off of him just because there were so many questions about his work. Load still that'd and, be the one thing his, I would ask and him about. his workload was bad um yeah. he, he was spelled by Bilal Powell a decent amount and then he got they were up so much that he almost didn't play the entire fourth quarter they put in Ty Montgomery um and he was and super Josh close. Adams he got he got like what like 12 carries um yeah that sounds about right 12 carries five targets and it, dude, he had a touchdown that I think was yeah. A touchdown. I think it, I think it was a touchdown too. I I don't know why they didn't give it to him. Yeah, and then they had another play from the one first and goal from the one where they play actioned and and got it to Griffin instead. And I mean, he could have had a much better game. Uh, but the reality is, is that he gets he he's kind of got that floor that you know he's like James White with carries basically um and he was only 1100 more than White so I just thought you know he's also going to get some goal line work etc I just thought he was spending that 1100 there was a much better sprint spend than like paying up at wide receiver too yeah uh so we all played we all played Dallas Goddard he was he was actually a lock 
Yeah, so people are adding me, like, uh, did you play Caden Smith and Cash, this and this and this? They, and, they, uh, they don't even know that we dropped Caden Smith and our co-owned team together to start Scott Simonson, except Sammy was such a, such a, a, a mega mind that he didn't even remember to start Scott Simonson after we dropped Caden Smith. Yeah, I picked him up and left him on the bench because I was busy tinkering with my DFS lineups and, uh, yeah, cost us one and a half fantasy points. But – I did keep him in a, a GPP or two, but the reality is, is that when, you know, it, you can't, he was never a cash play. Like, Kayden Smith starting, was never a cash play. Starting uh, Jaden Graham over him in the Scott Fishbowl is going to cost me the playoff spot, even with the 53-yard Jaden Graham reception. I mean, you just can't keep Caden Smith down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Caden Smith's just a boss and uh, all-time boss call. Uh, we all played Dallas Goddard. I thought he was a lock, and so did you guys. Uh, when all the receivers were out, they'd basically just been using him on every snap. His performance, Davis, was I mean, it was really it was awesome. one of the it was one of the most special things I think I've ever seen. He had seven receptions and ended with less than ten DraftKings points. I I would I would like to run a filter on Pro Football Reference to see the last time that someone did that because uh, probably that Jordan field, Matthews that, five years ago, pro- probably Jordan Matthews. Yeah. I would say that one of those Sam Bradford Eagles actually probably has a, has a chance, you know, the Jason Avant stat line, five receptions for, uh, for like six yards or something. Um, I mean, I guess I, I did consider Vance McDonald like a, a decent bit. I, I thought that Vance would see a lot of targets and uh, the, the Steelers just didn't throw the ball at all. They just, they, they did just run the entire time. I, I will say, Sammy, I, I did post a lineup in our group chat where I just, st- I just straight up played Ertz over Sanders with a punt defense and that lineup would have cashed no sweat. Yeah, Ertz, it's almost Ertz. like it's almost like just being stuck on a lineup construction isn't kind of uh, the right way to play. I muted Nate because I'm not even gonna. I'm not even <laughs> just gonna let him finish that. I'm not even gonna let him. Okay, Nate, you're Nate's back like, now. You got it, Nate. I mean, <laughs> if you if you look at Nate's lineup, he actually played six wide receivers. Like, I'm gonna count. <laughs> played, I'm gonna count yeah. Camara <laughs> and James White. His his lineup literally projected for like eight carries. <laughs> <laughs> the leading the leading rusher on Nate's team was Jameis Winston. Was Jameis Winston? <laughs> <laughs> well, I always another thing about Jameis that I... Samuel, so that Samuel's four rushes would have like double his team total. <laughs> That's another thing about Jameis that people don't realize. He's he's been running. He runs a lot. Yeah, a little bit. No, he's he's like had more rushing yards than than like. Dak over the past five weeks. Yeah, he's he, he's been he's been taken off. He's been running like thirty yards a week. Um, so just so everyone knows, I haven't paid my Zoom US bill, so we have six minutes and twenty two seconds left of this. And, uh, uh, and, and well, judging, if you and if, if, you're if you're wondering why I didn't pay my bill, uh, you've heard me talk <laughs> about my lineups for the last few weeks, so you guys get it. This will be the last Gilcast. Um, why why did you guys not play Cincinnati's defense? I considered it. I just ended up having – what did I go? Broncos 2,400? Didn't need the salary, yeah. bro. You didn't need the salary. I mean, J-Matt provided everything that Nate needed. <laughs> well, no, I just – like, so my Bengals team was the Ertz and, Ertz and Goddard both team, and I just – I was – net like, I'm not coming on this podcast and being like, dude, I played the mega mind double tight end lineup. Even if that leads to me winning, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you would play Goddard over J Matt is so funny to me. Is literally so obvious. Like you'd have to be a galaxy brain to not see why. There's Nate, no what are you talking about? For the tight Nate, end there. This is Nate. This is literally the stupidest thing you've ever said on the history of the show. Matt has J Matt plays more snaps, more air yards. What are you saying here? J Matt is on every single snap. Goddard only comes out when there's a two tight end uh, formation. Any other tight, any other formation they run, that's like thirty five percent of the snaps that he is excluded from just because he's the second tight end. Have you watched J Matt play football like the last two years? He he's no, literally he hasn't useless, been dude. Football. <laughs> like, like I like I love Jordan Matthews. He is just useless. He's gonna play the rest of this year and not score a touchdown. Goddard will probably score four the rest of the way. 
Well, luckily, well, I, don't I mean, the Eagles play J-Matt the rest of the year because Alshon will be back and all these guys will be back, and I'm never going to play J-Matt again. Yeah, but J-Matt's going to get cut, bro. Yes, like, I don't yeah. care. Be back on the couch. It's not about what I think is going to happen over the next couple of weeks. It's on this specific week. And you played a 30-snap Goddard. You would play a 30-snap Goddard over us every down player like J-Matt, who's running down the field 13 yards. How many snaps round. do you think? How many snaps do you think Goddard played? I don't know. Let, no, tell me, tell me how many. Tell me how many you think. Just uh, okay. I will tell you the total number of snaps they played, and you tell me how many you think Goddard played. They played seventy-six offensive snaps. How many do you think Goddard played? I'm like I, I'm, I'm saying sixty-five. 50. Forty-five. Uh, he to played. 50. He played sixty-six of seventy-six offensive snaps. You gotta watch the games, Nate. Nate, you, you gotta you gotta watch, watch the Carson games, went, bro. I was so tilted about that cart when I can watch that game. Jim Matt played a hundred percent. Yeah, J Matt played six more snaps. And that's where all that EV came from was those six extra snaps. And but he saw yards. less targets. But he saw less targets? He had a higher whopper. He had a higher area. Oh my higher, god. If I have to hear points. Nate say whopper one more time. If I had a higher <laughs> he had a higher expected fantasy output well you can expect whatever you want and that way when the scores come out you can be really surprised but <laughs> like, like jordan matthews has never it chief let me just... i'm so mad i'm still i like nate refusing to take this l of double playing j matt and then keel harry is like it just <laughs> infuriating to me <laughs> okay, there's, there's two l's to take this week james white and julio we didn't play Derrick Henry, who was 40% owned and got 35. That's a pretty big L. We played James White over Derrick Henry. Let That's me just what I just you, said. James I mean, White was the L. Dude, we're in like week 12, and I feel like you've learned nothing about the first 11 weeks of the season. I've made profit. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I've made profit. <laughs> That's what I've learned. <laughs> I'm so mad. Davis. Davis, Davis continues to hold on to playing DFS like he used to from 2016 and continues to lose money because he can't get his head outside of a three running back every single week. Even though Miles Sanders and Brian Hill are these guys, you're jamming in there because you go, running back has a high floor. Use your Sanders brain. was a good play. Sanders was a good play. Davis was projected to play less than 50% of the snaps after the – He was the not. Third. Not by good projection systems. Davis, you had you scored twenty two less points than Nate Noling. How does that feel? And feels I like maybe three K wide receivers. I feels like games. feels like Matt Ryan, Ryan should uh, try points. I, had a well, I, I shared I shared that running back with you. Feels like a tough scene. That's what it feels like. I mean, I'm not I I I'm not trying to like I don't know. You're you're. <sighs> We have I, I less than a minute, so you you clean us up here. I was just gonna say, I think your lineup was better than Nate's. So I'm sorry. To say. 